What's going on guys, Matt here. So today we are looking at the Cold Steel Con. Not a very popular Cold Steel knife, not a very like well-known knife. Anyway, there was a crazy sale going on because I believe these are being discontinued. So I picked a few up, a few to kind of sell off, a few to give away as gifts, and then one to keep for myself, if that tells you kind of how I feel about this knife. So as always, we're gonna do some specs. We'll do some size comparisons. We'll talk about what I like. There's a one thing I don't mind in this uh, video. We'll talk about what I don't like and then some Something unique about the cold steel con so let's do some size comparisons real quick before we look at um <clears throat> these specs so popular knife just so you guys kind of get an idea of the size of uh, the rat one by ontario yep it's a little bit smaller on this cold steel con and then we'll just do one more um, something that's coming up for review that I have just fallen in love with is Cold Steel 8010 Lite. Uh, man, I love this knife. It's just awesome. Got a great deal on it, and I just think it's a really fun design. So yeah, three and a half inch blade on this guy. So this is a little bit smaller. So let's talk about those specs. So we're looking at a three inch blade on the Con. So a little bit smaller than a full size knife, you know, kind of similar to, let's say, uh, let me grab this out of my case real quick, Kershaw Leak. You know similar in size to to that you know um so three inch blade it is three millimeters thick standard kind of thickness that cold steel has their knives at it has a full g10 uh handles no liners like their recon series you know lawman uh ak-47 um it has it weighs 2.24 ounces so that's what it says on the site let's get this handy dandy scale oh my goodness Is my scale dead no way my skill's dead already. Okay, so we won't weigh it, but we're just gonna trust that it's 2.4 ounces uh, in weight. And I believe it, um, it feels very light. It's a very light weight knife. Um, <clears throat> overall length is six uh, and seven eighths inches. It is made of OS 8A steel. Got that old, old steel, cold steel logo right there. Sorry, those reflections are kind of getting in the way. You can see that OS 8A. Very common kind of cold steel steel, right? They uh, used OS 8A in so many knives for so many years. They've since upgraded most um, to either like S35 or OS 10. Uh, they do still make a few in OS 8A. Um, their Marauder uh, Bowie, I know, is made in OS 8A. <clears throat> anyway, we talked about those G10 liners and then... To pick these up, you used to be able to find them about 35, 40 bucks. They had this crazy sale on Amazon for like 12 bucks. I picked a few of them up. Now on the secondhand market, I think they're going for around 35, 40 bucks. Uh, they probably will go up. Let me get this uh, fingerprints off here. As kind of, you know, people desire them more. Now you guys may be wondering, hey, that is a con definitely, but there's something missing and you are right. The finger hole opener is missing. Just to kind of give you an idea of what it usually looks like. That's what it usually looks like. So it looks a little bit different and we'll talk about why I kind of switched that up and took that out and decided to use this just as kind of a spider hole type opening, right? Uh, it's a little bit smaller uh, as you can see than a standard spider hole, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more <clears throat> later. Okay, let's get into what I like. So this knife, remind, and I won't get into this too much because I do want to talk about it and what's unique. Uh, it reminds me of old steel, uh, old, old steel, old school cold steel, right? Simple design, G10 liners, OS8 steel. Um, it's not super expensive, you know, uh, it's kind of an inexpensive blade, has the triad locking mechanism, forgot to mention that in spec. So I like that it reminds me of that kind of an inexpensive um, cold steel knife. Like I bought, I remember I bought the Recon series when I was in college in like 2012 uh, and it was like 45, 50 bucks and I loved it, I thought it was awesome. So it kind of just has shades of that, it reminds me of that. Another thing I like is the texturing on this G10 is perfect, guys. I don't know if the texturing has always been like this on the cons. I'm not sure if it was more gritty before. Um, this has the uh, Cold Steel, the older Cold Steel logo. So I have a feeling these are old production runs and they were always like this. So um, the traction on the you know AK-47 and the Recon series and the Lawman were always a little bit too gritty and they recently switched them, which I think was a fantastic idea. Um, but this, if it's always been like this, fantastic job. This is just like the Spyderco traction, just like the new Cold Steel traction. I think it's fantastic. Um, and these G10 liners are plenty solid. You don't need liners. Um, these scales are you know plenty solid. You just don't need any more strength with this. With the Triad, it's gonna be perfectly fine. 
So really like those G10 liners or these G10 scales and I really like the texture on them. Um, I love how lightweight this is guys, 2.4 ounces. Come on, for a three inch blade, I talk about how I want my ounce to blade ratio to be, right? Four inch blade, four ounces. We don't always get that and sometimes we make sacrifices with that, right? Um, like with blades like the Spartan, it's like 10 ounces. Don't care, four and a half inch blade, this thing's awesome, right? We make sacrifices with, with things like that. Um, but I do like it when it, can, when it can kind of meet that level and this kind of puts it in the ground for a knife to put in my gym shorts when I go running or when I'm doing chores around the house. I was you know, doing some yard work this morning. This was the knife in my pocket this morning. So pretty cool, love that lightweight. I also like the Tonto point on this. It's kind of an interesting design, isn't it? Um, and I do wanna add that into kind of what uh, I like about it. It's just a, it's a different design. It's not your classic, not even your classic Tonto point like this uh, Case Kinzua, right? That's more of a classic kind of Tonto point um, straight, but because it has that thumb hole opener and we can kind of see that profile in the uh, with the actual thumb hole, it's just got, uh, it kind of sets it apart, right? It's kind of a very interesting profile. You know what it reminds me of is it reminds me of the, um, <clears throat> that whenever Spider Co. came out with a PM2 and Tonto point, it kind of reminds me of that. The con got to it first, apparently. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this. I think it has an interesting profile and I like this on a Tonto point uh, blade. Yeah, I usually prefer something with a little bit of belly uh, or like a Tonto point with some curve to it because it will slice better. But Tontos are just great for um, like opening packages and stuff, which is like what 90% of what I do and I'm pretty sure most of you guys do as well. So quite like the profile on that blade. Let's talk about what I don't mind. It has to do with this thing right here. Um, this, this thumb kind of, I guess, thumb plate opening, you could call it, it works fine. It works really mostly like a thumb stud. Um, maybe it gives you a little bit more grip surface to work off of um, than a thumb stud would. I'm not sure I notice any difference. Um, the thing I don't like about it is, so like Spyderco, what, what they do with their thumb hole opener, which I think isn't a great idea, is there's nowhere on this blade that you can't cut, right? You just, this whole, the whole surface of this blade, it, it's cutting, it's cutting capable. You know, say you're slicing an apple. It doesn't matter if something goes over that. When you have something with a thumb stud, um, you know, that gets in the way. Sorry, these knives, man, some of these knives are just all... They got a bunch of fingerprints on them. You know, I don't know. I use my knives. No big deal, right? Um, that's how you should uh, have them, right? A little bit little bit used, a little bit worn. Um, so that stays in the cutting path. So if you're cutting something, that gets in the way. That's what I really like about this. Um, I'm not sure if what Cold Steel was thinking with this. Uh, maybe they're just thinking of trying something a little bit different, a little bit unique, which is totally cool. Um, this gets more in the way because it's bigger, right? Than just a standard thumb stud. So I think I would have preferred a thumb stud. Um, this doesn't really do, like it's not like things go up and over it very much. It, it's just gonna get in the way, which is why I um, I took it out. And honestly, this isn't as big as a spider hole, um, but it, it opens just fine. Um, I might take a Dremel and kind of ease my way into there and maybe cut out just a few micro millimeters just to give it a little bit more purchase um, when it comes to opening. But um, that's something I don't mind. The only thing I don't mind is this little thumb plate, by the way, it's just screwed in. You can use a little, it's like a tiny little um, Allen key or Allen wrench, whatever you call them. Um, and it kind of slots in that divot right there. And I have heard those loosen up anyway. So I went ahead and just took that out and I much prefer that. Um, and I actually quite like this now. I quite like this opening system now. There's plenty to get my thumb in. I have really thick thumbs. So if you have even kind of thinner fingers, it'd probably be even easier for you. Um, now I have that full cutting surface, really capable, small, little carryable knife. So, um, with the thumb plate, I'm gonna call it uh, something I don't mind. Without the thumb plate, this turns into an opening system I like, um, similar to the Spider Spider Co opening system. So let's get into what I don't like. Um, guys, there's not really anything I don't like about this knife. Um, you know, the thumb plate opening would kind of venture it, but it's actually, it's not a huge deal. Um, and with the ability to remove that and just use it as the plate, I think it's great. Um, I don't think there's anything I don't, really like about this knife. I was kind of thinking about it. I was making my notes and I was like, I just think it's a good little knife. Um, of course, it's not like an amazing knife. There, there are knives in this size category that are more prolific, um, that kind of, you know, pe people know more, they, they like more, they own more. Um, maybe they have a few more features that are, you know, kind of more desirable. Um, 
I still love this case Kinzu. I want to get my hands on the uh, Marilla, especially in the Magna Cut. I've never had Magna Cut. Really interested to see what it's like. So there's just nothing really I don't like. I just think it's a great little blade. And even if you can pick one up secondhand for 30, 40 bucks, awesome. Um, and that kind of gets into why. Um, this reminds me, and I'm touched on this in what I like. This reminds me of old, old school cold steel. Um, when I was, when I was a uh, 19 or, or 18, I got my first like cold steel folding knife, nicer cold steel folding knife. I had had the pocket Bushman, which it's, it's kind of a strange one. It's kind of in its own, a league of its own. Uh, but I got a recon one and, and clip point An OS eight, uh, had the really rough texture, had that Teflon coating on it. Uh, and I just remember loving that knife, using the heck out of that knife. I think it was fantastic. And I lost it, unfortunately, probably about five or six years ago. Uh, but this knife really reminds me of cold steel. It reminds me of cold steel when I was younger, um, when they made folding knives of not super premium materials, not S30V or anything like that, but of OS8, which is, was, you know, back then it was a uh, like upper middle level steel, uh, OS8A. Um, G10 liners, just a strong, high quality made. They made knives of good materials at a good price. They still do that, but with the new GSM ownership, um, I've been growing increasingly, um, wary of the stuff that they've been putting out, mass producing things, just not, not kind of taking care to, to really, um, put their names on things they're proud of. Unfortunately, at first I wasn't worried. I have grown a little bit more worried about it in recent times. So, um, this feels like the last gasp of a hopefully not, but possibly dying brand. Um, and I just love this. I love that it, it reminds me of old steel, uh, old school cold steel. I keep saying that old steel, cold steel. Um, and I just, I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's a knife I don't mind beating up and abusing because it's super strong, but it's also super lightweight. And uh, it's a definite recommend, guys. I would recommend you just take that thumb plate, uh, thumb plate out. It'll, it'll lighten it even up even more. You know, it's probably approaching like 2.2, maybe 2.3 ounces now. Um, and it works even better, functions even better, in my opinion. It's a definite recommend, even if you can get one on secondhand. Just a great, awesome little folding knife. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you'd like to see coming up next in review. Obviously, I have that 8010 coming next in review. I want to talk about um, a company that I've grown to actually quite like, which is Bear & Son. I got this inexpensive um, balisong made in the United States with the United States materials. Very interesting um, for... 30 bucks or so make a lot of interesting knives. I want to talk about those a couple of fixed blade essays we got to talk about. So yeah, lots coming up guys, but let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see reviewed here. Um, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.